afternoon from Uluwatu. We thought, you know what, we're going to wake up this morning, we're going to rent scooters from our host, and we're just going to go beach hopping. So it turns out riding a scooter is way more difficult than it looks. I got on one and quickly realized balancing is very difficult. And when I don't feel comfortable, I want to get off. So I then got back and over. It's just like, no, no, okay, and that you try it. And so I started doing it and kind of started just going off in a little quiet road, struggling with turns, coming back. And it's like, okay, it looks like you're getting the hang of this. I was like, am I? And so I started going along kind of the bigger road and started to get the hang of that seemingly nick was far braver than i and our host came back and basically insisted that i learn which it turns out is absolutely the correct thing so then he took me to the same quiet road where there was no one on so i could practice then he took us on like a bigger road where I could practice that was super quiet. And then the next thing I know, I'm just driving back from my little practice on the bigger road and Manu says, oh yeah, come along, I'll take you to a couple of places now. And next thing I know, I see Rachel just driving out and then we go off on a motorway. And so he's taken us around for the best part of an hour on a mixture of, I say busy, but they're not actually busy roads and little dirt roads too, I think just to get us used to all kinds of different terrain. But I will say like going straight, it's really not a problem. My issue is still learning how to give enough gas too much or too little when turning. I find that pretty difficult. Same, yeah, the balance is a bit of a struggle for me when it comes to that kind of stuff. But generally speaking, the good news is a lot of the main roads anyway are very, straightforward so and well paved exactly so that's why we haven't filmed much this morning because obviously learning this new skill has been difficult enough never mind doing it on camera yeah and obviously our morning of beach hopping or afternoon of beach hopping hasn't happened because we've been busy learning this important new skill but we have now built up our confidence so much that we're now going to get taken to a beach where apparently there are some nice restaurants and we might also grab a sim card on the way as well which we desperately need so yeah because just an fyi we haven't eaten this morning all we've done is have a cup of coffee and it's already quarter past one in the afternoon <laughs> so let's crack on or let's try to crack on <laughs> yeah solid attempts to crack on We enjoyed that cup of coffee two days ago. Basically, the cold that we mentioned took me out. I just felt so exhausted. And then I had little bouts of like nausea and dizziness. I have no idea what caused it. As you can hear, I'm still a little bit stuffed up and nasally. My sore throat seems to have subsided substantially over the past two days, but I'm rallying because we ended up extending our stay here for two nights because we didn't get to go out and explore like we wanted to. So we're gonna try and fit everything in today, hit up a bunch of beaches, as well as go to the famous Uluwatu Temple. 
and then we will move on <laughs> and go somewhere else in Bali. Let's crash on. Looks right, doesn't it? What? I can't. This is incredible. I mean, first of all, how did they get there to fish? <laughs> but also, we just saw a plane passing over, so that must be the airport over there. Out to the point the water is just so blue and there's a bunch of fishing boats I feel like this is what Bali's all about amazing I never knew that walking through sand on the beach or climbing back upstairs from the beach to the top of the cliffs would be so exhausting. But because I'm so stepped up, it makes it a lot more harder than normal to breathe. But that was totally worth it. The views were absolutely epic, like turquoise blue waters, just stunning views like, with like the waves crashing up against the cliffs white sand that you could like so comfortably lie on. The one surprising thing for me though is that the temperature of the water is actually pretty cool. And that was the stunning Balangan beach and honestly if the other places that we ended up visiting are anything like that then I think we're going to be in for a treat today. Yeah we'll have to decide which beach we decide to settle on or if we decide to settle on one because mm -hmm. we're like aiming to see everything today. So let's crack on. Yeah off we go. So we've just walked back up from Bingen Beach. These beaches have like the craziest names, eh? <laughs> <laughs> that one was a pretty intense walk up and down. It's basically, there's kind of a pedestrian zone once you park your bike up and it's literally all stairs down and then all stairs back up. That one was pretty small and quite crowded. Um, and it seemed to just be one for the tourists around. So. Just something to bear in mind, but um, there was a lot of loud music and places where they serve drinks with all sorts of happy hour specials. So if that's the sort of Bali experience you're looking for, then it could be a good one. Yeah, it looked like there were a lot of restaurants, bars, cafes, places you could take surf lessons. Um, and also it was like lined with accommodations. So I think a lot of the people who were on the beach probably were people who were just settled at one of those resorts and hanging out on like the beachfront in front of their hotel. It cost us 5,000 rupiah to park the bike, which is just 50 cents Canadian. So even though we didn't settle on this beach, it was still worth it to go check it out. But now we are going to head to the next one where hopefully we're going to take a little bit of a rest and have something to drink or eat.
basically we should have settled on Belangan Beach, is that what it was called? Yep. Which was the first beach we went to because Padang Padang, which is the beach that we were just on, is even busier than Bingen Beach. But the downside to this one is that there are not really any restaurants or cafes that you can go to. There's no hotels and accommodations. So at least there's something else to do on Bingen Beach, whereas this one is literally, you're just crowded and swimming with no food. They have places that sell drinks and we paid to get in. It's 15,000 rupiah per person, which is like $1.50. So thankfully not too much, but. Yeah, this uh, unfortunately feels like a bit of a waste, but let's try and find somewhere to eat around here to try and make the trip down to this bit worth it. It is worth noting um, that generally speaking, if you are going to go to any beach, then expect to potentially pay for both parking and entrance to the beach. It will be a minimal amount, but they will only accept cash and they won't provide you with huge amounts of change. So make sure that you have small bills if you're going to come to any of these. The good thing is that this area seems to have a lot of restaurants up on street level. So I think we'll be able to find something pretty good to eat. Mm -hmm. that there was this particular drink called a coffee me which includes espresso, vanilla, banana and almond milk and decided why not have both in one glass. Perfect. Let's give it a go. Oh my god. That is so good. So imagine an iced vanilla latte with a bit of added sweetness coming from the banana which almost gives it like a slightly caramelly flavor. It is nice, very good choice. We've both gone for dragon fruit smoothie bowls and they're topped with coconut, banana, mango, and granola. I'm not the mix mine up type, so we'll just see what I get on my spoon and go from there. We've just arrived to Uluwatu Temple and we bought a ticket. It is 50,000 rupiah each and it was cash only. And also they provide you these really pretty orange sashes and purple sarongs that you have to wear. So don't be surprised if you see us wearing some colorful clothing. Initially, there was a small temple that existed in this area, but the expansion of the complex to its current size took place in the 11th century AD. The thing that makes this particular Hindu temple quite unique is the fact that it protrudes out on a 70 meter high cliff face directly over the sea. This landscape and location is absolutely stunning. I don't know who picked to put a temple here, but what a fabulous choice. The location of this temple may as well have been at any of the beaches that we've been to today because it's perched on top of a cliffside. So just imagine having stairs down to the water and beach below it. What an incredible sight. Unfortunately, the temple itself is closed only to worship so therefore any visitor who is not here for the purposes of worship is not allowed in. However to get the best views then thankfully there is a walkway which hugs the cliff face the entire way round. So if you were to go all the way to the edges of each then actually that gives you a much better view of everything that you need to see from here. 
The only thing to bear in mind though is that there are monkeys and unlike the monkeys that we have seen in previous countries who generally keep themselves to themselves, these ones are known to be quite aggressive and will snatch your stuff. So you do need to make sure that you keep your stuff very much on you, out of sight. I don't know how well you can see us, but this is the lighting we have here. We have come to Niang Niang Beach for our last stop. It is a very, very steep incline all the way down. There are absolutely no stairs that take you down the cliff. It is switchbacks on a scooter. And I don't think we're comfortable doing that level of steep on the scooter. We're walking for that map, but here we are. Uh, so... Yeah, we, we walked part of the way down and basically decided that because it's past 5 p.m. and it's not like we're going to lie out on the beach, it might not be worth it to walk down and then hike all the way back up. I can imagine it would take us the best part of an hour to get back up. And this is considering the fact that we do still need to get home and that should take probably the best part of that half an hour itself. And stop for groceries on the way. Yeah. And we want to do that before the sun goes down because definitely don't feel comfortable going around on a scooter in the dark. Nope. So we've sort of car lost on this one. However, Yangon Beach looks nice. Yeah, the views look spectacular. It looks like it's far bigger and way more secluded than Binging Beach and Padang Padang for sure. So I feel like had we actually had a whole day, we probably would have come and hung out here at Niang Niang Beach just because I don't think it would have been as busy or we would have stayed at Belangan Beach because that also was really nice. And the bonus of that one is that it had really good looking cafes and restaurants. Absolutely. I think my personal favorite out of all of this one has been Belangan. But if you want a kind of a good mix of perfect white sand, crystal blue water, and then also amenities on top of that, I would say that that would probably be the choice for this part of Bali. We are going to be moving on finally tomorrow. I still haven't booked our accommodation. Nothing like flying by the seat of your pants, but I'm very impressed that we literally were able to do everything that we wanted to all in one day. I realized we didn't like relax at the beach, <laughs> but we got to scope out all of the beaches yeah. and visit the temple. Exactly. It was very whistle stop, but we managed to check off everything that we had hoped to see like materially wanted in the first place. So yeah, we can only be happy with that. I think that's pretty much all we're going to be showing you for today. So until next time, take care. And keep smiling.